And in this second video lecture, we'll be talking about historical perspectives in healthcare, introduce you to some other terms involving health insurance. Historically, we had a lot of acceleration in healthcare spending after World War II. But even before that, we had the kind of a hairbringer of things to come that are still with us today. For instance, in 1929, we had health insurance offered by Blue Cross Blue Shield to school teachers in Dallas, in, the, in Texas. I believe the first place was Dallas per R160 class. In the 1940s and beyond, through World War II, we had different executive and judicial acts to address the labor shortage. And related to that, we linked healthcare insurance to employment. And this is something that still survives with us today. With healthcare insurance and employment, larger employers, we call this part of an employee benefit package. And now because of the Affordable Care Act and so on, when people lose their jobs, they ought, used to lose their health insurance. Now with COBRA, which isn't a free benefit, but at a reduced cost, you can extend your health insurance while you're between jobs. And the way health insurance looks like is this. The first party is the patient. The second party is the provider or the medical office. And the third party is the payer. So patient gets seen sees a provider, there's a bill, insurance pays it, and the balance is left for the patient. Revenue cycle is really an interesting aspect of health information management. You need to be able to collaborate with both clinical, financial, and information technology. Using this multidisciplinary model, you have to have collaboration. You have to educate providers and other staff about this. And then you have to have a proactive looking ahead stance for reimbursement issues. As we know from HIM 270, coding changes every year. So with new codes come new challenges for reimbursement. Revenue integrity is basically performing these different tasks that we talked about in the first lecture about revenue cycle to get the most efficient revenue capture in a compliant manner. You want to get everything we're entitled to without crossing the line. So to do that, we need to have bills that are clean. They're free of errors. They don't have things that we need that are not filled. Right, We don't have incomplete claim forms. We need to have all services and supplies reflected. If somebody gets a surgical suture tray in the emergency room, we expect for that to be billed. We don't want to give away services without being reimbursed for it. And then we need to have compliance. So we need to adhere to the contract regulations and laws. And we'll talk more about some examples with organizations that didn't do that later on in the course. With the term integrated revenue cycle, we're talking about hospitals and systems purchasing other things so they can reduce their costs. So they're reducing their costs by buying additional facilities, labs, offices, and by sharing these types of services instead of having a small office where each small office has coders and billers and labs, you can have expand one lab and keep the overall cost down. And again, more and more practices are doing this. However, it doesn't come with um, a little bit of resistance to change, particularly from physicians. Some terms that you hear when you talk about revenue cycle are front end, middle processes, and back end. So think of the front end as 
from the patient's perspective. You're interfacing with Peace Health to pay an emergency room bill, right? So the only thing that you're seeing is all those things that are in front of you. You're seeing the web portal or the paper bill, right? Those are front end processes. Middle is about the resource tracking. So that's assigning the correct codes, those types of things. And then the back end is the claims production and the revenue collection, right? As somebody who may be a patient at Oregon Medical Group, you're kind of outside of that element. You don't see the back end. You have no idea how much revenue Oregon Medical Group is making or not making. It's all kind of behind the scenes. That's what they mean by those three things. So again, think of front end as patient, anything involving the patient, middle processes, talking about resource tracking. So think of that as coding, what have you. And then the back end is the claims, the revenue collection, accounts receivable, things that more or less fall into the business aspect of it. And again, this is common. We have a lot of these. Sometimes you see this type of process represented in a circular way. <clears throat> First step is the patient has to be scheduled for treatment. This is kind of an inpatient hospital. They're admitted. They order tests, supplies, what have you. Patient is discharged, the patient gets an explanation of benefits, and then they get a bill from the facility and the physician, right? So when we talk about bills, important thing to bear in mind is, are we talking about the facility bill or the professional pro fee bill, the physician bill, if you will? And again, with the different perspective, right, we can see some of these here, very much the same. They're scheduled and authorized. They're admitted. Things happen when they're admitted. They get tests, they get labs, so on and so forth, right? And then eventually the patients get discharged, so the record gets reviewed and coded, coding back to that middle process -y. The claim gets produced, audited, scrubs, so we have a clean claim. We send the claim to the payer. And then the accounts are managed and payments and remittance advice are received from the payer. And then anything that's outstanding, the deductible or what have you, is collected from the patient. I have some examples here. I'll let you read those on your own. And that's all I have for you. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about this material that's covered in Chapter 1. Bye now.